Hello and welcome to University of Porto in Portugal. My name is Ana Ruth Neves. I'm a PhD student in the Faculty of Pharmacy of this university. Our campus is located in the central area of Porto with a beautiful view over the River Douro. Today I'm going to spend a few minutes introducing our latest paper in International Journal of Nanomedicine. So let's go to the lab. The last decades have witnessed a rising interest in resveratrol by health professionals because it is found in grape skin and seeds and consequently in red wine. As a compound of red wine, resveratrol is pointed out as a possible contributor to the cardiovascular protection conferred by red wine consumption, the so-called French paradox. Moreover, the interest in resveratrol has been substantially increased over the last years due to several other pharmacological effects, which include antioxidant activity, cardiovascular protection, anti-inflammatory effects, chemopreventive properties, neuroprotection, anti-aging, and more recently, it was also discovered its great effect in obesity and diabetes treatment. Despite the therapeutic effects of resveratrol, its pharmacokinetic properties are not so favorable, since it has poor bioavailability, low water solubility and chemical instability, being rapidly and extensively metabolized and excreted. To overcome this problem, the main goal of this work was the development of nano-delivery systems based on lipid nanoparticles. These nanosystems may protect and stabilize resveratrol during its transit inside the organism, while enhancing its oral bioavailability. These challenging systems might be suitable for further use as medicines, supplements or nutraceuticals. The lipid nanoparticles were produced using a relatively simple modified hot homogenization technique. First of all, the lipid and aqueous phases are warmed up 5 to 10 degrees above the melting temperature of the lipids. After that, the two phases are mixed maintaining the same temperature to promote the formation of the oil water emulsion. The mixture is now submitted to high speed stirring in a ultra thorax, followed by sonication in order to form nanoscale particles. At the end, the formulations show a white appearance like milk and low viscosity. The images reveal almost spherical particles with uniform shape and a smooth surface. The mean diameter was about 200 nanometers and there was no visible aggregation of particles. In order to evaluate the quality of the developed nanoparticles, both nanodelivery systems were characterized according to their entrapment efficiency, average diameter, polydispersity index and zeta potential. Here we have the results of the in vitro release profiles, simulating the gastrointestinal transit conditions. The first three hours concern the release in the stomach and from then on the intestinal release. It is possible to verify a burst release at the initial state followed by a sustained release. Considering that the digestion process does not usually take longer than 12 hours, SLNs have lost 18% and NLCs only 13% of the encapsulated resveratrol. Therefore, both nanodelivery systems can be considered suitable for oral administration, conferring protection to the incorporated resveratrol and allowing a controlled release profile after uptake. We are at the moment performing permeability studies using CACO2 cell monolayers to evaluate the potential effect of the nanodelivery systems on enhancing intestinal absorption of resveratrol. Simultaneously, we are studying the biocompatibility of these nanoparticles by performing MTT cell viability assays. In summary, we expect that these developed nanosystems contribute to the therapeutic usage of resveratrol by minimizing its instability in vivo and controlling its release profile. In the name of all my colleagues, I hope you enjoy our paper. Thank you for listening.